All right, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to bring to your attention our goal for today is looking at algebraic solutions. Being that we've spent a lot of time looking at graphs, that's been the last whole worksheet, that was the last video, what do graphs look like, how do we decipher them, what we are now going to do is connect to the mathematical models that describe the graphs. And the reason why you want mathematical models is so you could start to solve for some of the numbers, like, okay, what is the acceleration, what is the position, those types of things, and we can start to put numbers with it. So, our goal for this video is to set, uh, get a set of four, you will see actually Actually, maybe a fifth one up here there. It's a very easy one, um, but I will throw it in there as well. Um, equations that could be used for constant acceleration. Keep in mind, all of these equations are going to be going around constant acceleration. Um, if you do not have constant acceleration, you cannot apply these equations. So that is going to be the one thing to just kind of remember when looking at these equations. So, as you can see, we are going to start with the V versus T graph. Note that there's the initial velocity, which is right here. There is a certain time T, and then at that certain time T, you will see the T and the V line up so that that is a certain time t describing some velocity. And the first equation is literally just doing y equals mx plus b. In this case, v is equal to the slope m, which is the acceleration. So v is equal to a times t, because t is going to be our x variable here, plus the initial velocity v naught. And this is our first equation that we will get a very simple one at that. So again, this describes at any given time, t, we have a certain velocity v, and we can solve it as long as we know the acceleration and the initial velocity for that time period. Equation two. Now this one's actually pretty easy. Um, this goes, of course I want to keep the same settings. Um, this goes with the idea that um, if we take the area of this graph, the area, again, of this graph is the displacement. And what we need to do in order to write the area is we're going to split this up into two chunks. You notice that I split it up into a rectangle and a triangle, rather than saying let's take an area of a trapezoid, but either way it would work. So the area of this is equal to delta x, which is equal to the area of the rectangle plus the area of the triangle. The area of the rectangle, as you can see, the height of this rectangle is going to be called v naught, and the length of this rectangle is going to be called t. And we're going to add that to the area of this triangle. Area of a triangle is one-half base times height. One-half is there. The base is going to be t again, and the height of this triangle is actually going to be v minus v naught. And you look at that equation, you realize, well, actually what we could do is we can simplify this down a little bit with a little bit of math. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to keep v naught t, and then we're going to add and we're going to distribute this 1 half t to both of them. So we have 1 half v t minus 1 half v naught t. And you realize that we have like terms, v naught t and v naught t. Those are the same term. So we can say, oh, hey, let's combine those. And when we combine them, we are left with 1 half vt plus 1 half v naught t. And remember, this is all equal to delta x. Um, you will realize in science what we like to do is we like to simplify this even further. And the way that we can simplify this is we can take out a 1 half and a t. And we are left with v plus v naught as the remainder. There's the 1 half there, and there's the t. And so you realize this is a second equation, v plus v naught over 2 times t is equal to delta x. And if you want to get an idea of this, this is going to get really weird. Um, you're not going to like me for saying this. You will realize that v plus v naught over 2 is what we can call a simple average of the velocity. Uh-oh, remember when I said you can't take one velocity, add it to another, and divide it by two? Well, I lied. You can as long as you are looking at constant acceleration. Remember we said equal time frames have to happen, so to make this make any sense, 
v, take a look at this graph, v plus v naught over 2 will be that number right there. And what I'm saying is I'm saying that this, v plus v naught over 2, this chunk right here, and if I colored in this area, is the same as the area of the original triangle. Because if you think about it, this piece and this piece are identical. So technically this would work, and you can see this is where that another equation, technically we can do average velocities by taking v plus v naught over 2 in order to get that. So that checks out. This is a new equation, equation number 2. All right, for equation 3, um, you will notice for even equation 3 and 4, all we're going to do is we're going to combine these two suckers together. So um, you'll notice that they both have certain variables in common. What we're going to do is we're going to just substitute them in hopes to eliminate variable. So what we are going to do is we're going to substitute this equation, the v here, we're going to substitute it for the vn over there. So you start to see we, what we do is we have at plus v naught as the substitution for the v that was right here in this equation, plus v naught divided by 2 all times t. And you see that this still equals delta x. Um, what I would do if I were you, I would try to simplify this expression. This is a little bit of algebra. I want to see if you guys can come up with what our final simplified delta x solution will be. Pause the video, give it a shot. So in order to do this quick, um, what I'm going to do is you will notice that I can add both of these v-nots to get 2 v naught. Um, you will note that I'm going to have to distribute the t to both of those, um, the 2 v naught and the at. And we're going to have to divide by 2. So you're going to realize that we should get 1 half at squared plus v naught t. Notice the 2 v naught gets canceled out by the 2, and then the half has to go in there because there was not a 2 in with the at. Um, this is an OK expression. You will realize, hey, Bell, what's going on? Um, you will realize delta x is the same thing as x minus x naught equals 1 half at squared plus v naught t. And what we can actually write this down as is x is equal to 1 half at squared plus v naught t plus x naught. And I don't mind either one of these expressions. Um, you will notice this is an expression for delta x. This is an expression to just solve for x. Um, what I want you guys to think about is what this is referring to is if you have a curved graph like this, this equation represents that graph. And if you remember correctly, we created a mathematical model that said, wait a minute, when we actually made this graph into x versus t squared, remember that the slope had units of meters per second squared. Well, take a look. If you were to think about this, it was um, x is equal to m t squared plus our y-intercept, which we would call x naught. Notice this m here. What do you think that m is representing? That m is representing this number right here, the 1 half a. So what will be really fun is if you go back in your notebook and you realize that the slope of the x versus t graph, t squared graph, is actually representing the 1 half a. So it should have been half of your acceleration. We'll hopefully go back and take a closer look at that um, tomorrow in class, if you'd like. So that is equation number three. Like I said, it's either one of these two. I will give you this one on the test, but just notice that all you got to do is move the delta x on over. Oh, I'm sorry, move the x not over to get delta x. <clears throat> and equation four. Equation four is pretty simple. Again, what we want to do in this case is we want to actually eliminate the variable t. Last, last um, one you notice we eliminated v. In this case, we're going to eliminate t. So looking at these two examples, you will realize that we could just rewrite this equation as um, v minus v naught over a is equal to t. That's just a quick little algebraic thing. And what we are going to do is we're going to jam that in there, and you're going to see magic happen. Actually, one of the coolest concepts about physics starts to show up in this case. So we have, let me write this out. Let me actually zoom out so you guys can see it as well. 
again, we are taking this V plus V naught over 2, and we're going to be multiplying it by this T that we're substituting in there, which is V minus V naught over A. Multiplying these things together, and this still equals delta X. And you realize something very cool. Um, if you look at this, you will note that the V plus V naught and the V minus V naught is something you've learned in math, and you've probably been like, why would we learn this crazy concept? This is a conjugate um, whenever you have a plus of one thing and a minus of another. So we know when we multiply conjugates together, we are left with V squared minus V naught squared um, because the inside terms cancel out. How cool is that? I mean, it's like math showing up in physics. And this is the reason why they teach you these concepts is so that you can actually apply them in a situation very quickly like this. So there is our com or that's our conjugate there. And then that's divided all by 2a. That equals delta x. And what we are going to do is we are going to rearrange this just to make life a little bit easier. And this is what most physics books will write out. I'm going to move the 2a on over. And then I'm going to add the v naught over. So what we are going to do is I want you guys to try to solve for v squared. Give it a shot real quick. Um, try it out. This is good mathematical practice for you. Pause the video. Give it a shot. See if you can get the right answer. All right, so if you would have done that properly, um, what you would do is you'd move the 2a on over. So you'd have v squared is equal to um, v naught squared plus 2a delta x. And we can box that in. That is our fourth equation that we are going to look at. So let me zoom out and give you just kind of a brief understanding of what happened. <coughs> we have four equations. Those four equations are as follows. We have V equals AT plus V naught. We have an equation V... Hey, Bell. Uh, v plus V naught divided by 2. All of that times T is equal to delta X. We have an equation on over here that says X is equal to 1 half AT squared plus V naught T plus X naught. And we have one last one that we came up with. V squared equals V naught squared plus 2A delta X. Notice that these two top equations came from the graphs. The other ones came from just running substitutions, but they have meanings. Remember, this one comes in on over here. This is actually an interesting relationship between V and X that's not that big of a deal to understand graphically. But you have these four equations, and I want you to realize that each one of these has four unknowns. Realize this has V, A, T, and V naught. This one has V, V naught, T delta X. This has delta X, A, T, V naught. So they all have four of them, but they are all missing one. Being this is a very important equation because you know what? This equation does not have, in this case, um, it does not have a delta X. So this is an equation that is missing the delta X. This equation right here, if you notice, this equation does not have A in it. If you look at this equation, this is an equation that says if you have all this stuff, well, you really don't need to know the V. Remember, we subbed that in to get rid of it in that equation. And the last one down here, you realize that when we were doing this, um, you did not, um, there is not a T in that equation. So when we start solving problems, you will realize sometimes they won't tell you anything about delta X. And you're going to sit there and you're going to realize, you're like, wait a minute, I don't know delta x. But I have three of the other knowns already in my equation. So once you get the three, you know the fourth one that you're looking for, but you don't know this fifth one, truthfully, that's not even going to make a difference. And this is the reason why we have four different equations, is so each equation has its own way of working and its own way that, you know, you don't need to know this fifth variable in order to get there. So this is the main concept. All of that stuff before that talks about how it's applied. Remember that these things all work under constant acceleration. If you do not have constant acceleration, sorry, these um, do not work. So 
you notice the graphical implications. Hopefully you got all that. We will use these things tomorrow in our worksheet that we will start. Thanks. Have a good night.